you are Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Locked On Jazz for the 14th of September. Facebook Live edition with your questions about the Jazz, the upcoming season, and all that's going on. I'll update you a little bit of what I've, the guys being around and in town as we get ready to roll for the season. That's all coming up on today's show. On Locked on Jazz. Bum 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 pow. How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA Insider. More and more I'm hearing people getting tours of Vivint Smart Home Marina, hearing about it, how great it is. Buddy of mine does some of the plumbing over there, was telling me all about it yesterday. Practice facilities almost done. Seasons right around the corner. Fun, exciting times. Thanks very much for Tuning into the program today, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Shamrock Auto Group, as often as the case on Facebook Thursdays. Rob Taylor and the group at Shamrock sponsor the show. Shamrock Auto Group is down in Pleasant Grove. Rob started it many years back when he didn't like his car buying experiences and thought he could do something different in the business. And the key to the whole thing is Brady Kimball. Don't tell Rob I said this, but his general manager, Brady Kimball, is the key. See, see. Brady's been around forever. Their buyer is a technician for 25 years. So when they're buying newly used cars, they're doing all the research. They know exactly what they're getting. And then you can get newly used cars, whether it's the Suburban that's up on the middle of their 2017 Suburban, beautiful, white, look exactly what you need, and you're getting it at a better price because why Brady Kimball and Kellen and the crew down there are getting it done. They look at their reviews. When you go to Shamrock Auto Group, search the Google reviews, and you will see absolutely fabulous reviews on everyone. Brady and Kellen do the work there. Brady Kimball's the GM. Kellen's been in the business I mentioned forever. These are the guys, and they specialize in those Suburbans, those Yukons. If you have a Tahoe's, if you have a car you want, call them up and have them Look for it and find it for you. People come from outside the state all the time just to use Shamrock Auto Group in Pleasant Grove. 801-361-9796. 801-361-9796. Or you can just talk Rob off at 801-319-2250. We are trying, and we'll see if it ever happens, to uh, get all of our Facebook all of our Locked On Podcast Networks live here on the Locked On Podcast Network Facebook page and uh, create kind of a fun Thursday, just continuous programs uh, for you. So that's that's the goal uh, along the way. So hopefully, hopefully you get that. I want to get your questions and your thoughts uh, on everything. I, I feel like we've covered most things jazz-related. Uh, there's a lot of interesting questions. Uh, one of the most exciting things going on right now with the Jazz in my book is the uh, kind of what's going on in Eurobasket. Igor Kokoskov, who's our uh, Jazz assistant coach, is the head coach of the Slovenia national team. And they are the story. They beat Latvia the other day. Uh, they're undefeated. They'll, they'll match up with Spain and Ricky Rubio here in the semifinals. They have Luka Donka, who is the maybe number one pick of the draft, Goran Dragic. They have some nice players uh, on that team as well. But that is uh, – they, they pulled off a little bit of a stunner uh, holding off uh, Kristaps Przingis and Latvia the other day. So huge, huge thumbs up to Igor and everything they're doing. That game, I can never figure out time, but if you get a chance, it's probably worth watching. Neither of those teams has, wa- has lost. Um, and so you've got – The Spanish team led by Ricky, who's playing very, very well and most importantly playing very, very aggressively uh, in in what he's doing out there. And then you've got this kind of young gun in Luka Donka. You've got Goran Dragic and you've got it coached uh, by Igor Kokoshkov. So very excited for Igor. Uh, that he's having this kind of success. He's really found a way to get Dragic and Donik to work together. They scored 103 points against Latvia, so he's got them playing up and down uh, with great skill uh, and uh, just very, very cool uh, in uh, for him. So if you get a chance, Eurobasket, you just check, just go Google search. I can never figure out the time change. I'll tell you the wrong time. I think it's like in, uh, actually, Sebastian says it's three hours from now. So it'll, it'll be going on while I head down to um, interview some of the players. So I've been sitting down uh, with our players this week. Uh, I've talked to Epe Udo. I've talked to 
Jonas, 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 Jonas Derebko, he, in the U.S. he goes uh, by Jonas. Um, I talked to Alec Burks yesterday for a long time, who has just battled through uh, health um, and seems to be in his playing and feels pretty good, seems much more mature. The baby seems to have had an impact there. Uh, I sat down with Joe Ingles yesterday for a long time. These interviews will start to air tomorrow. Uh, we'll start with Jonas Derebko on Friday, the Get to Know interviews, and we'll be daily starting next week again uh, with Locked On Jazz. So uh, planning – might miss one day next week, but I uh, planning generally to be daily again next week. Uh, media day has not been officially announced, I don't think, but unless I'm missing my math, it's like a week from Monday. Um, it's got to be. Like, it's not – like a bunch of other teams have announced it. It's not, it's not really crazy tricky to kind of do the – do the walk down, but we play a week. We play a game two weeks from Monday on October second against the Sydney Kings. So media day can't be any later than the twenty fifth, and I don't think it's going to be the twenty second. So it would be the other choice. So we'll start daily next week with the get to know uh, interviews. Really enjoyed talking to Jarebko. Really thought Udo was quite interesting about his Turkey experience. Uh, very bright. Very very bright people. Uh, talked to Tony Bradley for a while yesterday. Boy, he's just a kid. It's just crazy what a kid he is talking to him. I mean, really nice young man, small town in Florida. He was telling me um, about how small his his town was that he grew up in, and he uh, and he was talking about his younger sister and how she's getting bigger now. And I suddenly realized, like, he's nineteen. He was born January eighth of nineteen ninety eight. And so when when he's talking about his younger sister, I I don't actually know what how he's how how old she is, um, but he he's like he's like she's much older now. I, she could be twelve. She could be fourteen. She could be sixteen too. Uh, he is from Polk County, Florida, and a bar town is the is the city. Um, its population is about twenty thousand. So it's it's a pretty small town, and it's interesting. A lot of these guys are kind of from small towns. Bartel got hit a little bit. It's right in the center of Florida, but it's near Tampa, so it got hit um, a little bit uh, with the hurricane. I'll, have to, I'll check with Tony today and see how, how badly, but fun to talk, fun to hear from him just sharing about that. So we'll have all these for you. Uh, I'm doing the fun stuff. Just take me back to your hometown, and then I'm trying to do a feature on kind of perseverance and passion and grit and – and Talent Code, those two books I read this summer, and get these guys to talk about that from a little bit of a different perspective uh, than what most, that a lot of our other interviews are about. So uh, let's get your questions going uh, and, and all that. Chuck Cooperstein and I, the radio voice of the Mavericks, who's a really fun guy, did a uh, long podcast on the Western Conference uh, intermixed with over-unders and all of that. So uh, make sure that you... Um, check that out. I think it was a pretty good one. I think you'll like it. Please share that we're live on Facebook. That increases our audience uh, with everything else. So let's get to your questions here. We'll start it off with uh, Bryce. Comments on the new locker room. So it's circular. Uh, I think it's bigger than it was. And uh, it's cool. Uh, They've done some nice subtle things in the way they've lined up everything in that back room for the players so that they have a better experience. Um, They're able to get to where they need to get to, interact, get to their family if they without uh, much difficulty. Uh, So I think uh, the training area is huge and beautiful. Uh, So I think uh, I think the players will like it. I think it it looks uh, nice. And um, so I think it's uh, I think. I mean, that's my comment, but it's a big circle. Last, it was a square before. This one's a big circle. So I think the thought on that is it creates more interaction. I think Miami was the first team uh, to do that. Uh, Parker says, what are the most, why are more people not talking about Rubio making faves a lot better? Is there anything that shows favors production with a good point guard? Uh, well, we have not, I mean, I think George Hill was pretty good and he was injured all year. Before that was Trey Burke. Devin Harris, not really a point guard. No, I mean, I think that's, I think the big question on Derek is whether they can stay healthy. I mean, he seems to be moving well now. I've talked to him a few times. He feels better. Um, he did some interest. Antonio Lang uh, was telling me that he did some really interesting things, shooting drills recently with a heavy ball that got him away from flicking the wrist 
that he was flicking the wrist and that so his shot was a bit flat and they used a really heavy ball to get him to have to kind of put some arch on it and get it up and over and by doing that his shot has looked uh been much better and just kind of watching him play pickup ball uh a little bit before I meet with the players he's hit a bunch of outside shots and and looks uh better his movement is probably not 23 year old Derek Favors but I'm not sure 23 year old Derek Favors ever I mean that that movement was you know and I'm not sure that that ever you know I don't think 28 year old guys move like 23 year old guys how old's Derek um but he you know he's out there he's He's running up and down the floor on a daily basis. He's playing a little pickup. He's uh, looking for a bounce back year. He's 26. Derek's only 26 years old. He's father of three. Uh, gosh, incredible how young these guys still are. Uh, but he's really, uh, Antonio Lang was telling me just about how kind of exciting that was to see him uh kind of work on his jump shot, work on his shot and be able to add that element. And I, I would back that up that I've, I've seen him shooting and it, and it seems a bit uh, more comfortable. Uh, do you think Boston is better than last year's Jazz team? Um, I think we should get over it already at some point here. I thought it was interesting. Everybody's so fired up because uh, Gobert on the top 100 was ranked ahead of Hayward. Um, I mean, I get it. I'm not sure it does us any good to be constantly looking at it that way, but I got it. Uh, people were so happy about that. One person even tweeted me, that's our NBA Finals. Might be. Uh I think Boston's interesting. They are loaded with talent. With Al Horford, Kyrie Irving, and Al Horf- and Gordon Hayward have all been All Stars for a reason. They're loaded with talent. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum have top five picks for a reason. They're loaded with talent. Their identity a year ago to me was Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, Amir Johnson, Kelly Olynyk. That toughness. Jarebko's pretty tough. That's a lot of turnover. So they're a very, very different team. They're much more skilled and talented than they are grit and in your shorts. That, frankly, is long-term going to win you a lot more games. Um, but it's not um, – it's it's just a different team. They're more talented than they were a year ago. Um, I You know, I still don't know how good last year's Jazz team was, right? I mean, with all the injuries – so last year's Jazz team was what it was. I don't think we can ever try to figure out anything more than that. And I'd say this year's Boston team is probably better than that, than what it turned out. Now, what it could have been, I don't know. Jared Schultz, is Rubio just this year's version of Al Jefferson or Marvin Williams' pickups of the past? Don't understand that question. Uh, not trying to be difficult, just don't get it. Like, Marvin Williams was a really good pickup. Um, and played really well for us. And Al Jefferson had his role to replace Boozer. I, I don't, I don't know. So my answer is no, but not because I don't get the question. I mean, I, Rubio's fascinating. You know, is who is he as a player out from the shadow of having to be in Minnesota at, and picked ahead of Steph Curry? How valuable is a point guard? Um, in the, in the realm of the league, what does he do for favors? What does he do for Gobert? He's just a natural passer. He's looking to move the ball. He's a winner. He plays hard. He's got a little something to him from everybody I've talked about. Um, you know, I, I, he's, he, there's a specialness to kind of his the aura around him. So I, I don't know what that does for the team. Uh, you know, he came in on the. Sports Illustrated 100 as, I think, the 61st-ranked player in the league. I think the Jazz are hoping he's better than that. Uh, I think the Jazz are hoping that he has a little bit of a breakthrough to being the player that he was supposed to be talked about. They've 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 referenced a, a high bar for him. They've referenced Jason Kidd type of career development for him. Uh, this is a guy who's been a pro since he's 14. He's, tw- he's another one who's 26. Right? I mean, if Favors is healthy, he's 26. Rubio's 26. Gobert's 25, 26. Um, this, is, this is still a very young, Gobert's 25, young team put together uh, as, a, as a young, um, as a young group. So, 
I mean, there's just there's a lot of potential for this team to grow together. And then you, and you got Rodney Hood, still. You've got the at 24 years old, and you've got Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, by the way, I'm as as I have been on some of these national podcasts. I, I'm very excited about him. He, he is going to make a huge amount of mistakes. He is going to make you pull your hair out. He is going to be uh, a real test for Quinn and the coaching staff on how much freedom they allow him and and how much he puts. I'm curious to see how much Rubio helps him. Watching him just kind of play open gym, it's pretty out of control at times with a lot of decisions that make you go, oh, um, and turnovers and that because he's just trying to figure out the speed of everything. It's only going to get faster. It's only going to get tougher. So he's going to be turnover prone. He's going to be bad shot prone. He he also will make three or four plays that just you're like, whoa, NBA, just elite level, like Dwayne Wade driving to the basket type skills. So um, when you look at those, you know, I, I just going to be an interesting thing to me. I'm like, on one part of me thinks he's going to force himself on the floor for 25, 26 minutes a night. And then, and then I see him and I wonder, gosh, is he going to, is the, is he going to be able to have enough rope to play 14 minutes a night? Cause I'm not sure he's going to help you win. Right yet, he's 20-whatever years old, and he's going to make a ton of mistakes. So uh, I, I kind of go both ways on where I feel like Donovan Mitchell's going to be. I, I think he's going to score. I think he's going to be really good. I think Dante better be terrific, or I think Dante's going to have a hard time getting on the court because I think Donovan Mitchell's going to push him for that. Um, and so those are uh, – that, that's my feeling a little bit of where, of where we're going to be on that. Um, and that – you know, that jumps out to me just kind of the two different spectrums of where he's going to be. But, boy, there's some skill there, and then there's the youth. Uh, is Neto on the roster? Yeah, and he's in town. Um, had a nice conversation with him. He traveled a lot this off season. got a lot of uh, – went to a lot of neat places. I told him I'd buy him dinner if he told me about all of them because I'll probably never make him there in my lifetime. He went to France with Rudy, as I think we all saw on Instagram, and uh, then traveled with some of his buddies. He was in Brazil and some other places, so – uh, some cool, um, some cool places for him. Let's see. Jared Schultz tried to elaborate on. Oh, agree or disagree? Small market teams are a true farm system for the NBA. Hayward's a good example. It's a problem. I mean, Durant's a better example. Um, it's a problem, but the players have to. You know, you're not going to limit player freedom of movement either. So it's. You know, it's by definition a little bit a problem of of what the league is. Know anything about being able to stream games online? I do not. I do know something, though, for our foreign fans. Uh, we are going this year to um, put up the radio broadcasts in their entirety so that for those of you that live overseas are a Ricky Rubio Spain fan, a French fan of Rudy Gobert, a Swiss fan of Tabo Cephalosha, a Swedish fan of, um, not a Swedish fish, a Swedish fan of Jonas Jarebko. Um, who am I forgetting? We have like 11, for, an Australian fan of Dante Exum or Joe Ingles. We are going to um, put the entire game up on a podcast feed for you this year. Uh, and then you can wake up in the morning and w- listen to the podcast version of the bro- of the radio broadcast uh, is the plan so that we can reach you internationally. Because if I've got the timing right, when we're playing is night for most of you. Uh, and so then you wake up in the morning and can do that. Does that make sense? That's the plan, at least. Um, so I hope that works for you. Uh, I guess also if you go to the game, you want to hear Ron and I's commentary and stuff like that. We're going to have that for you. So um, that that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to build. Um, so we'll see. All right, um, I got to catch up to the questions that are coming in. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to the players about the new arena practice facility and what it means to them and how it impacts their view of what the Jazz are doing versus other teams? You know, Colby, I haven't focused it in that nature. I talked to Jarebko and Ingles about it, and they both said it was incredible. Um. So that that was kind of their. Uh, they both feel very good about it. Uh, Sebastian, who keeps dropping things in. 
By the way, feel free, for those of you who are listening on foreign lands right now, let me know where you are. Uh, Sebastian just said, in Uruguay, Western time can get a game until 2 or 3 a.m. Okay, but wouldn't you rather, Sebastian, just wake up in the morning, you can hear the radio call of the game, It'll take you about an hour, I think, if you just do the audio, and we will have that for you on a podcast feed that you can da- take, download, or stream, and then that hopefully will... Uh, allow you to be connected to the jazz even better and not have to stay up till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning or on the days you can't. Does that sound good? Uh, I am trying, I, I will tell you, here's my biggest thing I'm trying to do this year for you as fans. And I'm, I'm and I, this is, so we do all these surveys and a huge percentage of jazz fans or of people in Utah say that they're avid or just people say that they're avid jazz fans. But I think the avid jazz fan who actually has a, life and kids and a job and everything. They end up going to three or four jazz games. They probably watch 15 or 20 of them on television. And there's another 60 games a year that you actually really passionately care about and avidly want to know about. And yet your life is in the way. Maybe that's too high. Maybe it's 40. And what can I do as the radio broadcaster of the team to be a conduit to you in those days? Is it Instagram live, Facebook live in between quarters where you quickly get a two-minute little blip uh, because you're out at your kid's game and you get that. Is it a tweets of the score more often? Is it empty the noggin after games? Is it postcast with Ron Boone live on Facebook where you get to ask questions after games? Is it Snapchats, which I have no idea how to use? Is it um, Instagram my stories throughout the day that you just kind of get? I think I'm going to probably try to do this. So what are – what are your feelings on uh, on that uh, that we can do to support you in that fashion uh, or that I can do to support you? I'd love those. Dlock09 at gmail.com. Email me those. So right now my plan is kind of Instagram stories during the day, if that works for you, Facebook Live before games, and maybe Periscope Live too with Ron Boone as we have been one hour before every game just like last year. I'm thinking about, in quarter breaks, doing a quick Facebook Live hit. Is a Periscope better? Is Facebook Live better for you? Um, Just in between quarters, uh, at the first, second, and third quarters, and we'll do postcast, hopefully live on Facebook this year. We may do a lot of this at the Utah Jazz account. Um, So what are the things – what do you want? Instagram Live, uh, Facebook Live of Quinn Snyder's press – uh, shoot arounds. Do you want Facebook Live? What, what are the things, you know, so Colton Thompson just said, I miss 10 to 12 games a year. Okay, what in those 10 to 12 games a year can I do for you to get you more connected uh, to the teams? Um, Jared Schultz said the idea on that Rubio Jefferson comment was that the Jazz go out and get pick up good and above average guys that fill a void but are not stars. I mean, getting stars is really hard. There aren't very many of them. And so, uh, you know, I think we're hoping Rubio can be starish. That's that's what I would say. Uh, do you see a day coming where small market teams begin to fall, fail financially because of super teams and NBA becoming smaller? No, the day I see ca- happening that's bad for the Salt Lake City, San Antonio's, Oklahoma cities of the world is when air travel becomes a little quicker and there's now teams in Spain, Paris, So Barcelona, Paris, London, Mexico City, and the population growth of those cities is and the sponsor availability is so dominating that these that we uh, maybe eventually end up in something like European soccer where you have the different tiers. I don't know. Um, By the way, interesting article today, Adams on the broadcast comment. I'm all over the map. Uh, Adam Silver said he wanted. The uh, NBA TV broadcast to possibly become more like Twitch, uh, the video stuff. I need a little help on that. I don't know how I can do that on radio, but what is that? I think I feel like um, – actually, Ajali just um, – and I believe, is, if that's how I pronounce it, Ajali is one of the people in, interviewing for our internship. Um, I think all of those are great as well as Twitch. A lot of people are turning to that for information now that they've opened up their platform to more than video games. I think it'd be great. In our interview, you will have to tell me about that. Uh, but that's the other uh, one I would be interested in knowing a little bit uh, about. So f- seriously, keep me educated. 
Um, after the first 10 games, will the Jazz be, have better chemistry than they had last year with Hayward on the team? And can you foresee any move that could be to improve our team before the season? I think it's unlikely for a move before the season. Uh, I don't think there's a lot to that Andrew Bogut report the other day. The chemistry on this team was great last year. And Gordon led the way positively. We can't, just because he left us, we can't become revisionist history on who he was. He 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 was terrific. Uh, he had led the team in a model of how to work hard. George Hill was the vocal leader. Gordon was working. The chemistry was great. Uh, the first 10 games are important just because they are. Home against Denver at Minnesota. Can you get one of those two? Home against OKC, can you get one? Can you get that? Can you get two of those three? Those are Western Conference teams. At the Clippers, so those are four teams right out of the chute we're battling with. We're not going to know how to score. We're not going to know who we are yet. Can we get two of those? At Phoenix, got to get it. Home against the Lakers, got to get it. Home against Dallas, got to get it. Home against Portland, got to get it. Home against Toronto, got to get it. Right? So now can you... Can you come out of those first four at two and two and then play? you play five games in, that you're, are winnable? Can you get four of those five and suddenly you've started your six and three before you head to Houston for one, back home for Philly, Miami, Brooklyn, and Minnesota again? Like 15 games in the season, can you beat nine and six, ten and five because the schedule's off because there are murderous rows coming where we're going to lose. There's a stretch of the schedule. We could lose 11 straight and play well, right? I mean, there, it's the December stretch. I don't have it in front of me, but it's, I think it's at OKC, home against Houston, at Milwaukee, at Chicago. We probably should win. Maybe it starts here. At Boston, at Cleveland, at Houston, at Oklahoma City, home against San Antonio, home against OKC, at Denver, at Golden State, home against Cleveland. I mean, that's a nine-game losing streak, and you're playing well if you're not careful. Uh, aren't the on-court rules that benefit offensive players and the leagues insistent to put big markets on national television the real cause of small market teams being at a significant disadvantage, not the lottery like you were saying? No, I'm not saying the lottery is making small market teams as a disadvantage. I'm saying the league, the small market teams are at a disadvantage, and the lottery is one of the few ways in which the small market teams can actually try to do things a different way. And if you take away the... The the advantages, I guess, to being bad, then you end up eliminating one of the few ways the small markets can build. What are you adding or changing to the radio broadcast this year? Uh, we are, well, we have two less commercial breaks, so that is a change. Um, we're keeping thorough um, with our first and third quarters. We're still doing Day in History. We're still doing NBA Now. We have the most highly produced NBA broadcast there is. So I, other than that, I don't think we're changing a lot. Because, um, uh, I mean, I honestly, I don't mean this. The play-by-play announcer might suck, but we, that's a different conversation. The production quality and the work that we're doing on our broadcast is the best in the NBA. And the segments are the best in the NBA. And last year and the year prior, I thought we hit it. And um, there's no other team in the NBA that's doing any. The Wolves are close and the Warriors are close. Any type of production, drop-ins, uh, sound work, sound editing, inclusion of sound, uh, features in-game that we're doing. The Warriors do it in their whole broadcast. Alan Horton's brilliant in Minnesota. Uh, there's a lot of other announcers that are just brilliant, but production of our broadcast is unequaled in the league. So I, there's not a lot of adjustments that we're making this year. If you have suggestions, we will take it. Oh, I'm still here. Uh, the game podcast will be awesome. One of the great things that you did a few years ago was tour of the away arena. It's really cool. Uh, to have curtains pulled back. Instagram was great. So we did those on YouTube. Another question, like how do you use YouTube? Um, add that to the list. I will, I will consider that. Um, podcast, let's see. Um, that was the Twitch comment. Between what you do and what I get listening to the Zone shows during the day, I don't feel like I miss very much. No, the Zone's awesome. Those guys are great. Uh, all of them are. PK's interview today with one of the 
maybe the wide receiver coach at Utah was just terrific. Uh, can Rodney Hood be the guy for us this year? That's a good question. And what's the guy? And what are we really asking out of him? My concern is we're going to ask him for something that's not fair. That, that truly, honestly, that's that's where I am with Rod. Like, okay, t- first thing he's he said two years. One was fifty games. One was fifty nine, and the other was seventy nine. So let's see if we can get this. That's the first thing. Availability. Then the second thing is his effective field goal percentage for his career is right on league average at 50%. Effective field goal percent weighs three-point shots. Okay, so that's so he's an average offensive player who doesn't go to the line very much, which gets him, I think his pack rating was right about even last year. Okay, so first of all, if he doesn't improve that, if you're lead, this is back to the Al Jefferson period of time. If your, pri, your number one shot attempt guy field goal attempt guy, is scoring less points in field goal attempts, you'll lose almost every game. Okay? Last year, Rodney had a tough year. He was a minus .7 pack player. That's not very good. So Rodney wasn't very good last year. Now, you go break out some of those numbers in regards to, you know, what happened to him when he got injured. And some of those are really eye-opening. So if you go back to Rodney last year, that knee goes, and then he can't play in the paint anymore. So when after he got hurt, he went 17 of 59 in the paint, 29% post-All-Star break in the paint. His rim finishing went from 67 to 61 to 56% in the last three years. So he's gone from a 67% rim finisher to a 56% rim finisher. Okay, that, that's got to fit. That's got to be fixed. So... He was a 42% catch-and-shoot guy, a 29.8% off-the-bounce guy. That's got to get better. And he's got to go to the free throw line. There's a lot of things in there. So while he's still developing his game, asking him to be the guy might not be a fair request. That, that's, that's my concern on Rodney. Let's let him just be, and maybe this roster can let Rudy just be, and Ricky just be, and Rodney just be, and Donovan comes off with a spark, and Dante breaks down some guys and does, and all of a sudden you've got enough stuff. Um, you got enough stuff going on that he doesn't have to be eight. I, I don't think it's fair to ask him to be eighteen points a night. Late in games, guys are gonna have to make plays, and I don't know who that is. When you're, th- th- we're gonna be a great defensive team, but when you're tied at ninety-one. Um, when you're tied at 91, you got to score to win. Pack is a great for evaluating players, but can't evaluate positions or teams entirely. Can you take all the point guards from last year and weigh their pack records with time we spent on the floor so that a jazz point guard pack score? George Hill was good, but he wasn't on the floor enough. You know, I have not got to that point. I think you get to too small sample size to have it of value. Um, I will sit down here at some night. I've got a lot of things still going on right now, but I will sit down here at some point and do a pack breakdown of every team. Um, so when we see that, then, and I'll try to do it. Last year I did it, and it was pretty accurate, actually. Um, it was pretty good on judging offenses. It doesn't judge defense. Am I wrong to be more worried about Rodney staying health than I am of favors? I'm not a doctor. I have no idea, but let's the, really the changes they've made to the medical staff are a big deal. I can see it just – walking around the building right now and seeing the guys practicing and meeting all the doctors and the new trainers and everything. And I I can just see that there's a different order and structure and, and building of the medical staff. I think that that's, that's an exciting thing that hopefully will help the, and that's not a criticism of any of the past guys. That's that there's struck a better structure now is what I'm saying. Uh, what is your favorite arena to visit outside of Utah? Toronto's arena is gorgeous. Conseco field house, which is now Baker's life. I think in Indiana is the most, kind of classic it's beautiful um i hate boston because of our broadcast site not because of you know the garden's cool but i hate it our broadcast site's so bad it's just an insult um the crowd in oakland's always incredible you know i mean walking into the to oakland's big deal i grew up there and just to be calling games in your home you know in the bay area where i grew up is big um my favorite one of all those to walk into vivint smart home arena and be at home Call call the you know be with jazz fans. Uh, I have NBA league pass. 
radio. I listen to half your broadcasts and half the other teams. You are in the top three in my book. That is really, really nice. Thank you. Uh, should you think you, who are the two, other two, Israel? I know who mine are. Tell me who yours are. I, I would have. I would not put myself in the top three. I can think of at least four guys I think are better. Five, six, seven, eight. No, I don't know who's better, but I'm curious to hear you think. Uh, what are the signs that this team is going in the right direction that we should be looking for this season, given that we're likely going to be take a step back from last season? I mean, I think the key thing is, are we elite defensively? Can we be so elite defensively we're miserable to play for other teams every single day? That, that's, the, that's it. Then, s- number two, when the start, can the starting five hang with other teams' starting fives at a level that our depth can impact games? And then number three is, is Quinn able to find a variety of offensive options or a variety of lineups that create different opportunities throughout a game? A, a, a huge amount of, I think, our focus is going to be, can we score, can we score, is our offense good enough? I actually think that will be the wrong focus. We're just not going to be great offensively. If we are, Quinn's done something amazing. If we're okay offensively, if we're elite defensively, we're versatile enough to cause people problems, and we're deep enough to give 48 minutes of effort and – and op and de- and opportunities, then that's exciting, and that'll give us uh, a chance to overcome our offensive inefficiencies. Uh, if Dante does not perform this year, for is it for? I think the question is, is this it for him in the NBA? Uh, he's he needs to step up. I don't know if that's it for him in the NBA. His skill set is so incredible. I mean, you just watch when he runs; it's just different. I, where were we? Might have been summer league practices. Like he was running, and I mean he's just so much. Inc- he's just insanely faster than everyone else. Like his twin sister is a track star, and it's not a surprise. Uh, will they sign Rodney Hood to an extension before the deadline? It's an uh, it's an incredible negotiation. We will talk about it a lot more uh, coming up. I think it's very unlikely just because of where the everyone's coming. From, uh, I think it's inc- going to be incredible. You know, Rodney's got this big opportunity, and so does he bypass the opportunity? And frankly, there's almost no money on the market. Uh, Danny Larue, who does great work, used to be locked on Warriors, is on with um, is on with uh, uh, Nate Duncan all the time on Dunked on Basketball. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up an email I just got from him the other day, and. Um, Sorry, I've emailed Danny enough that it's kind of hard to see. There it is. Uh, he was talking about how in 2016 there was a billion dollars of free agent money. Last year there was $400 million. Right now there's $400 million in 2018, which sounds like a lot, right? Except for that's before any extension signed. So if uh, Andrew Wiggins signs for $30 million, now we're down – and. And Jabari signs, which well, Jabari probably won't sign, but let's say Embiid signs for 18, that's 48. Let's say Aaron Gordon signs for 15, let's call it 15, that's suddenly 63. Let's say Marcus Smart signs for 12, that's suddenly uh, 75. Let's say Noah Va- uh, Alfred Payton signs for 12, that's uh, boom. Uh, let's say Nurkic signs for 12. Let's say Gary Harris signs for 15. Now all of a sudden... Like, we're down to $280 million. So that if you're Rodney Hood and you don't sign right now, on the on the Dunked on Basketball podcast, the, the Jazz offered four years, $66 million with no outs on it. And when they did the rookie extension show, and that's 16 and a half a year, and they said, no, if he gets that offer, I think he's got to take it. Now, he might want an out. After the third year, maybe the Jazz aren't going to give it to him. But the, the, there is just no money in the market next year. And then Rodney's more of a 2-3, but there's a lot of twos that are going to be available. Avery Bradley's on the market. Danny Green's on the market. So that, you know, are, and, and frankly, as I pointed out, Rodney was a negative .7 pack player. Like, it's not entirely clear yet whether Rodney is the man or a primary scorer at least or a sixth man. Right? I mean, I don't know the answer to that yet. Or a seventh man. And 
when you have that big a range, it's hard for Rodney to figure out what he wants to sign as a contract. It's also hard for the Jazz to answer what he would want. Does Rudy have a jump shot? I hope not. Everyone keeps asking, is Rudy going to develop? Why? He dunks. I want him to dunk. I want him to roll. The last thing I ever want is Rudy to think he should pop. I want him to dunk. Everyone, is he going to get post moves? Post moves are the worst play in the NBA. It's the least efficient play in the NBA. I don't want a post game. I don't want a 15-foot jumper. Those are terrible analytical plays. Uh, Will we run more with Rubio? Great question. Don't know the answer. All right, I think that does us for the day. I think we're 30 minutes in. I hope you enjoyed the Thursday show at 40 minutes in. Jonas Drebko, get to know tomorrow. It is Locked On Jazz, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks to Shamrock Auto Group for bringing us today's show. Make sure you give Rob a call down there and the guys at Shamrock and, and, and as I, the much-talked-about um, Brady and the great work that he does uh, at Shamrock. Uh, so they are, they are good. Brady Kimball. Is a longtime technician, as I said over earlier in the show, 25 years, 80 years combined experience in the auto business of everybody there. They are, they are just a basic, straightforward company that's going to give you a, a super experience. Look at their reviews. Unbelievable reviews. Shamrock Auto Group. People come from all across the country to be a part of it. And you want to also give Shamrock, give Rob a call. Shamrock Auto Group. Reach out to them. 801-319-2250 is Rob's personal number. 801-319-2250. Feel free to give him a call. This has been Locked On Jazz, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.